You're listening to the Hunting Land Man podcast. This is Slade Priest, your host, the Hunting Land Man. Rack buck down here on opening day. If you're interested in rack bucks and real estate and everything that has to do with hunting property, this is the podcast for you. Well, here we are, the Hunting Land Man podcast. I think this is episode 15. New Ryan and I are at the Real Estate Convention, the United Country Real Estate Convention in San Antonio, Texas, having a good time learning how to be better agents. And uh, we got a real treat today. Before we get too far, of course, this podcast and all our podcasts are brought to you by Southern Eye Credit. They take really good care of our clients. And uh, we're working deals with them right now. We're at convention. So you know we love them because we're always working with them. And we wouldn't work with somebody we wouldn't recommend to our clients. Today we have Travis Ham- Hamley. Travis is uh, a f- super friendly competitor. Uh, we've been bouncing back and forth. Uh, number one office, number two office, I don't know, for the past five or six years. Travis has been on top the last two years, uh, and uh, we shall see what happens in 2021. This convention is actually pushed back. Uh, this is the 2020 convention that got pushed back because of the big bad virus, so we're all here. Travis, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure, Slade. It's uh, always a pleasure to be with you guys. <laughs> well, Travis, tell us again the name of the new office because y'all – we, we went through a change here a few years ago um, when we started expanding to Minnesota and now into Iowa. Um, it was Homley Auction and Realty. We changed it to Midwest Lifestyle Properties to capture what United Country has with all their lifestyle properties, and we just put it right into the name. We specialize in the Midwest with hunting land and farms and things like that. So hunting, hunting land is a lifestyle. Farms is a lifestyle. So changing our name to lifestyles kind of like what you guys did with southern lifestyles it's been a trend uh you know united country kind of helped us guide us through the renaming of all these with their lifestyle properties that they've put into place over the years well uh travis every anybody who's listening out there who's interested in real estate for any reason you need to listen to travis he knows so much about uh, you know, about auctions, about traditional real estate, about every asset of it. He's a study of it like I am. One thing I like about Travis, he's a super hard working, good family, and uh, everybody that uh, works for him loves him, so you know that speaks volumes for him. Uh, you know, if you're listening, which most of our listeners are from the South, they're saying, well, why in the world are we listening to a guy from Wisconsin? <laughs> and, 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 you know, with offices in Iowa and Minnesota, well, um, first of all, the name of this episode is – why United Country, and who better to talk about it than Travis? Now, I'll tell you this from the back end. You know, I'm an office owner now and been an agent, been with other companies. And, of course, Travis and I both and many successful agents at United Country get approached probably from a monthly basis, other companies, going traditional, a mom and pop, just being Travis's real estate or Slade's real estate or hunting land man real estate. And so you got to think we have a little smarts. And uh, why are we still here? So before I answer anything, I'm going to ask Travis, why United Country? Well, I think uh, we can summarize it real quick to just the conversation we had before the podcast. Uh, You know, we were talking about some of our agents, some of your guys' agents, and bouncing ideas off each other. When you're an independent and uh, you just don't get that to bounce it off other people, people don't want to, you know, trade secrets, we're all on the same team. Uh, United Country's been around since 1925, which that power in itself uh, integrated with auctions and real estate and the lifestyles and SPGs. We can sell that to anybody and any property we go into the list when we get a seat at the table. We're going, we're coming out with a signed contract. And that goes to this convention, everybody that's here talking in the back rooms, uh, you know, down at the the dinner table, the bars and everything. You don't get that with a lot of other companies. A lot of other companies hold everything to the chest. They don't uh, sit around and talk and share ideas. I mean, I spent two hours yesterday with other offices sharing best practices. Um, I was with Remax in the past, and nobody shared any practices. Everybody kept everything to their chest. And this company is all open. That's something I would say, too. It's so everybody is willing to share information, super pumped up, hand you their card, their cell phone number, 
how you know hey if you ever need anything just let us know and 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 it's a culture thing that even the people like uh jerry james and the other guy that's here speaking they feel the same way and they speak about it you know it's a different kind of culture because we're all you know we're not urban real estate we're country real estate and what travis is speaking to is you know the why united country first of all why you would want to work for united country and why you would want to hire united country is the main thing we're talking about and he said spgs for the people out there don't know what that means especially property groups so if you've got a farm we can sell it if you've got a uh, recreational land you can sell it if you've got a horse farm we can sell it if you want to take your property to auction i know everybody listening from the south saying auction don't you mean a fire sale you know the rest of the world doesn't treat auctions like that i know they do in the south but uh you know uh, whenever Travis and them sit down for a listing appointment, they're not always looking for a traditional listing like us. They may take your listing down the auction route because they know that's how it'll bring the highest and best value. And it's treated a little different in the rest of the country. It's really been enlightening for me to see that that's just a normal practice in the Midwest and a lot of the country mm -hmm. um, of how, how real estate sold. It's really interesting. I wish it worked better in our area, and Travis and them probably do it uh, some of the best. How much percentage of y'all's office is um, uh, auction versus traditional? Uh, 2021, we're at about 25 30% of uh, the sales are from auctions. Okay. Um, you know, we're in a great market right now that it's uh, – very competitive, but uh, the auctions in a competitive market brings transparency to buyers. And it's not only a benefit to the sellers, it's a benefit to the buyers. And, uh, you know, back to the United Country thing is, you know, I've been an auctioneer since I was born. I mean, born into the uh, auction industry with my dad. But to call the president of auction services, when I have a question and he answers the call, you know, answers the call mm -hmm. and goes through everything and, you know, just bounce ideas to make sure I'm going down the right road with this client there. You just don't have that with other companies. That, it's, that is so true. So, you know, the president of our company or anybody with corporate, you know, we've got 6,000 acres, uh, agents that were, uh, that work for United country, right at 6,000. And unless, He's busy. I can text or call any you know, the CEO, whatever, and they call me back. They, I, I had the president tell me just a while ago, Mike Duffy Slave, we need to sit down and 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 get with best practices with you in your office and and try to do a better job of that and do more of it. And I knew they'd do the same thing with y'all. So, you know, their objective, their goal is to make this company better, not for Slade's business or Travis's business, but for everybody's right. business. And it's really cool. And and so, people out there listening. In the real estate world, an uh, agent's job is to get listings. If you're not getting listings, you're not getting many bids. If you don't have any, if you don't have any Z71s on a lot, you're not selling any Z71s. That's just how the world works. And so, what United Country does is provide us with better tools to help sell your land. Therefore, win the listing. Of course, we have great tools for buyers and stuff too. But we got to have the Z71s on a lot to sell them. And this is what I tell people, look, uh, I mean, I think Whitetail Properties is a great company. I think Midwest Land Group. I think uh, National Land Realty, Mossy Oak Properties. There's a lot of good companies out there, and there may be better fits for different people. But I will say this, and I will say this in confidence, and I bet Travis would say the same thing. If I thought I could do better somewhere else, that's where I would be. 100%. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it, I bet you at this conference I've been asked 10 times, you know, You've done great in real estate with United Country. Why are you still here? Mm -hmm. It's. Uh, I said, just look around. You've been to the classes. You've talked to the people, the culture, the the people involved. Uh, it really hit me this June when I went to Malta, Montana, with the president of our company, and we did a branding with a um, United Country office up in Malta, Montana. Uh, after we got done, before I flew out, we had an office meeting and you know, just shared practices and helped them with different ideas for auctions and things like that. And it just pays dues. But when we talk to other offices, it helps our offices too. Of course. I mean, because they're going to, they're going to ask us questions that we might not have thought of that we now dig into to better our practices. And, and, you know, we're talking real estate jargon in between offices and things right now, but for you out there listening you know, these are the kind of things, you know, we're sharpening our sword. And, and, and 
for the lack of a better word, we're at this convention and everybody's sharpening the same sword. Mm-hmm. That, shard, that sword's going to be really sharp because we're all working on it. And it's right at 6,000 agents out there, and we're all looking at best practices, what's working better. Our database is getting bigger. Like, you know, in our area in southwest Mississippi, we're not a destination for the country or the world for come to come deer hunting. Wisconsin, a little bit more. Uh, definitely Iowa, where, uh, where they've gone into. So... Um, with United Country, uh, you know, okay, Slade, look, I love, you sold me that property in Centerville, Mississippi. I love it, Slade, but I really want a place in Iowa. I can pick up the phone. Hey, Travis, look, I got this client. Take good care, and you can guarantee he's going to be taken care of. And I can do that in pretty much every state, including Hawaii now. And North Dakota. That's right. And so, so it's really nothing we can't handle, and we're growing that that brand and those different SPGs and things every day. So that's why you want to hire United Country. I want to get on a different topic. We've been really focused on real estate this first 10 minutes. Wisconsin, um, super great whitetail state. I've, hunted, I've deer hunted and turkey there. You're in Iowa now. Uh, what's Are you getting ready for the season? What's the market doing like? Uh, give me what's going on up there right now. The the market in uh, the market's hot right now still mm-hmm. even though hunting season starts here tomorrow in Wisconsin um, and it's coming up in Iowa pretty quick uh, <clears throat> there's people are still trying to get things uh, set up for the nine day rifle season and later season uh, it's still hot out I mean hot in Wisconsin is when long. is y'all so your rifle y'all rifle season that's your main that's that that's where the droves of orange army or, orange army come out when and when is that uh weekend before thanksgiving oh it's a rut city. so it's rut city it's mm-hmm. uh you know it's a week it's the weekend after missouri opens up okay. is usually when it uh opens up and so we're finalizing some deals right now for people to get uh get their uh land for that season uh we have next weekend we have a 262 acre multi-track land auction that uh Actually, Marty, one of my agents, is out there showing clients right now so they can get ready, get their financing lined up. Uh, Iowa, um, there's been some tremendous land sales, record land sales it's there. It's crazy, it, those numbers. It's uh, it, it, We didn't see these numbers and uh, since 2015, 14, when, you know, the, the boom happened back then. So there's still str- it's still strong, and then it'll kind of taper off October, November, and December, it, it'll crank back up and go all the way through April. What is the reason it cranks off? People are just out busy hunting? A um, couple different things. Uh, people had a bad season. Uh, you know, they're hunting public hunting grounds, right. and they had a close experience with their kids, with somebody hunting, and uh, they want safety. Um, you, well, anybody hunting in the, the north, when the leaves fall off, you know, you can see more. People don't like buying land in July in the upper Midwest because the foliage is all there. When they're looking in January and February, they know what it's going to look like when they're hunting it in the fall. That's, I never thought about that because I see, like, bear cub and, and uh, y'all, y'all showing stuff in the snow. I'm like, it's a terrible time to look at land, but I didn't ever think about it like that. And, and you can see where your deer are wintering. The trails are prominent with, uh, I mean, they get on one trail. They don't veer off when there's, you know, two feet of snow on the ground. Right, so. right. Well, um, for so let's just talk about Wisconsin right now. Um, do you have a lot of super out of state buyers? And if you do, where do they come from? Most of the out, um, most of the out of state state buyers come on the western side of the state. They come out of Minnesota. Okay. Southwestern side of the state, they're coming out of Madison, Milwaukee. Um. Where one of my offices and where I live is Wisconsin Dells, which is the water park capital of the year, of the world. We have a lot of people coming out of Chicago, Milwaukee area. They're, they're coming up there because they can buy buy a farm, have a cabin on it. They can take their wife and kids up there. They can go to the water parks while they work on their property. So it's a destination for their family, not just year for round. them. Year round. Uh, just for my listeners, over-the-counter tags... Over the counter tags, uh, in state and out of state. So. Two buck, one buck. Uh, one buck with a bow, one buck with a rifle. Good rule, good rule. I like Missouri. Uh, turkeys. How m- I actually know this, but correct me if I'm wrong. You get different seasons, and you get to draw for every season, and you can have s- a, 
several turkey tags. One through season one through three is a draw, mm-hmm. and then they're then they come as a kind of it's not a you get on the phone when they open up the other seasons, mm-hmm. and uh, you you buy as many tags as you can. So. You heard that turkey hunter. So you not only have incredible deer hunting up in the snow, bring your kids to the water park, but uh, I've been up there before when it was one of the later seasons, and you know you get four or five tags, mm-hmm. and um, that's pretty fun. Yeah, to, uh, during uh, when we had the the virus going, you know, just rampant, and everything was kind of shut down. We we slaughtered them. I mean, I had five toms, and you know, one in, out of six seasons, I had uh, five season tags, and. Five times, and I think we ended up with 25 times. Big toms. turkeys, too. Ah, it's big old turkeys up there. Yeah, we shot, uh, this last year, we shot uh, three birds over 27 pounds. That's that's tanks. If you, and, and everybody from at home, you know, our turkeys are 16. The biggest one I ever killed is 21 pounds. I've thrown a 30-pound gobbler over my shoulder in um, Iowa, and it's, it's different when one is 27 pounds gobbles. Mm-hmm. It's it's different. It's uh when his when, and usually up there you know it's cold in the morning. A lot of times you have frost. And when a 27 pound turkey flies down and hits frosty ground on one of those semi mountains they got up there and gobbles, it's like God talking to you. And they stand taller. It's just it it's just eerie. Yep. But they're in front of you with those big birds. Well, and that, and you, if you're watching the real tree stuff, you've seen Culpepper and Blanton and all go up there and hunt with Jason and Travis. They've got exceptional hunting, really cool office, some good agents. Uh, they've got, you know, I'm big in the agent competition of selling every year, and um, and Brandon and Joe, some of my friends, they are they're always high in the competitions. Got some good agents. New agent Jason's. What's Jason? Two years in. Uh, this is thir- I think he's three years in now. This so. is uh, yeah. This is his yep. third year, and uh, I mean he's Jason will be in the top ten if not this year, next year probably. And he's doing really really good, and it speaks to what the good job Travis and them have done of training their agents, and it speaks to like we've got a buddy of ours, Levi, was a cop like six years ago, mm-hmm. and the dude is top ten every year. Uh, selling forty, fifty million dollars worth of real estate, and he was a cop, no sales experience, but he loved to work hard. He had discipline. Came in, uses the tools with United Country that help us sell more land, provide better services, and he's killing it. And everybody in this, you know, if you if you go anywhere, if you want to buy land up in Bethany, Missouri, where we're buying land, uh, Ryan and I, you know, we got Fred and Tony up there. We got people all across the country that are super, super local experts, and they have all these tools. And, and experts in different fields. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the biggest thing you said is using the tools. Mm-hmm. Just like a carpenter, a house doesn't get built without him pulling the tools out of the truck. That's right. That's right. They got they got to use them. They got to be a hard worker. Look, look. you can come work for my company or Travis's company tomorrow and, and just sit there and wait for the phone to ring. And you know it may ring a couple times, and you may do okay, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna do near what somebody who uses the tools implements. And look, I'm guilty, and I know Travis is too. Scott at our office, everybody's guilty. I'm gonna say we use thirty percent of the tools. It's just you know so much that we that we and they're constantly coming out with new tools. That's what the convention does for me. It realizes how bad I suck. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. how much I should be doing more, and it and kind of energizes me. And talking to everybody at convention gets me fired up for, man, no, they're doing good. They're doing stuff we need to be doing. I've been texting Ryan and taking notes, and I know Ryan has too. Hey, we need to do this better. We need to do this better. And it just energizes. And that's my favorite thing about coming to competition. I mean, convention is talking to the competition and and just exchanging ideas. That's my favorite thing about it. Oh, I've been doing the same thing. My office managers. Email's been blowing up with any time I, I hear just from agents, from other owners, from the speakers that we've been going to, sending her email saying, we got to get on this, we got to sharpen this. And mm-hmm. th- those they've been there. We just sometimes overlook them. I got another thing that I, I just thought about whenever, I don't know what made me think about it, but uh, you just built a bad to the bone new office. We, uh, it was an existing office building okay. that uh that was, in your that's in your hometown uh that is in josh uh my business okay. partner's hometown up in uh holman on alaska area that is uh real close to the covenant buffalo county of mm-hmm. uh wisconsin that and everybody knows there about and uh um but w- we looked at this building josh called me and said hey you got to come up and look at this building we can renovate it and uh it has great traffic 
um, and it fits the lifestyle of our company. Oh, it looks like Cabela's or Orvis. It's and, like, and, it's uh, unreal. And we have mounts everywhere. Um, it's, it's got a uh, bar in it, doesn't it? It's got a bar restaurant that uh, uh, is being leased out. So um, it, it, it's just, it, it fits the United Country profile of offices. And, you know, we, we got another one up in one of our offices. It's a log cabin. Um, and from the outside, it's it's not as impressive as the one that... Uh, you know you're talking mm-hmm. about but it's uh we just got to look at the lifestyle that we do and portray it and uh, live it and take our clients to the next level we gotta it. step it up ryan i mean you know we just got we just got an old house converted into an office maybe maybe we need to talk to scott and and step it up but i definitely definitely do like that office it gives you a good feel when you go in there it's yep. uh it makes you want to get out and get out in the outdoors and buy something and, and, and experience that lifestyle. And, and Travis keeps saying it. We do. We sell a lifestyle. Um, you know, we all like to think, and I'm so guilty too, and all my clients are guilty. We like to think, oh, well, we're buying this big buck property, and we're only going to shoot five-year-olds, and we're only going to go down this road when the wind's out of the north. When in reality, that's about 2% of what you do, maybe five. What you really do is go either fill feeders or plant food plots or, or – ride your buggy with your 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 kids or your buddies or go fishing in the pond or sit at the camp and cook and watch the football game you do that way more than go try to shoot the 150 absolutely 100 mm-hmm. percent. it's uh it's the lifestyle with i mean TS, tsi work and i mean you guys do a lot of logging like we right, do up right. you know up there iowa we don't run into as much logging because there's more farm ground than there is logging so different parts of the world, there's different things that people use their farms for. Missouri, everybody's putting a lake on their farm so they can take their family. They're fishing mm-hmm. for the weekend. and uh, Morel mushrooms yeah. and four-wheeler riding and horse riding. And, you know, th- we all like, we like to put the big buck and we, we like to do all that. But it's like my house. Like every day, my little girl, Asa, we go feed deer, move cameras and stuff like that. I mean, I do that literally six days a week how many times am i actually gonna go hunt those big deer not not even near near as much as daddy let's go ride the four-wheeler let's go take the dog for a run let's go she likes to check booby traps booby traps are limbs hanging over the road that's booby traps if you didn't know she taught me that but uh (laughs) the hunting land girl.com she's going she's uh she's learning all kinds of stuff but it's so many of those things that like you said like lifestyle that that we don't even we don't even consider when we're buying a place but it's actually what we do on them and uh, i think with uh today's age Mm -hmm. more people are seeing that because of social media uh, has opened up people's eyes that this you can live in the country you can go to the country and get out of the city and live that lifestyle and uh what what better is for you know for people to i think you know another thing that's brought up that has helped is the internet access right getting access to the internet to work in those places mm-hmm. so yeah like uh dan our, C- our ceo t- said the other day he said the great migration and what he meant by that was you know with people were forced into the zoom technology with with uh you know with covid and and he thinks only a third of this great migration and what he meant by that was let's say where we live uh, maybe you always had to work in Baton Rouge because, you know, you had to go in the office every day. Well, now we've figured out, well, maybe we don't have to go to the office. Well, maybe we can buy a farm in Woodville and the kids can go to school up there and I can go fish in my lake every afternoon and go fill my deer feeders or do whatever, you know, on my farm and I don't have to go to the office. So if that's the case, you know, we may, you know, just talk about investing in land, the great migration is going to make the scarcity of land or greater. Even, even greater um it really is you know as salesmen we're always talking about it's a great time to buy and all this kind of stuff if we had a crystal ball we wouldn't be doing this podcast we would be uh sitting on our billion dollar boat and catching a fish getting ready to go kill a deer right. <laughs> uh, but anyway uh you know they're saying the experts not me people much smarter than me are saying we got two more years of this and they're saying this is not a bubble that's going to pop. The factors that created a bubble are not here. It's just going to slow down to more of a norm. So we got two more years of this. So let's say in Southwest Mississippi, where stuff selling, let's say thirty five hundred an acre. If this goes on for two years, interest rates being low and where it's at right now, I, I'm scared to say. I think I, you know, we're already in the four thousands an acre for good rec stuff in Southwest Mississippi on a lot of stuff. I mean, do we get to the fives? 
I don't know, but I do know this. We're, I've never lost a dollar on a track of land I own. And that's hard to say for an investment. And and I'm pretty risky with mine, you know, because I, I, I'm confident in my land and I'm okay with stepping out there and taking a risk because I believe in land. So I guess what I'm saying is clients out there, for me or Travis or anybody who, who in the United country, um, I'm not asking you to do anything I don't do myself. Right. And um, I, I have buyers say, well, when is this bubble going to burst? And I said, you know, if we had a crystal ball, it would be great. But mm-hmm. – the thing is, is I, I say, don't wait for it to burst if you want the best properties, because the best properties are only on the market in a good market. So if you want that true trophy property, you, you have to be buying it now. Interest rates are cheap. Um, you know, I'm not going to sell my farm when yeah. the market goes down and the interest goes up because your dollar per acre is, is going to be. Two things you just touched on uh, that I want to hit on. Okay, so you said, say it again, you said the best properties are only on the market in a great market. Yep. Let's expand on that. So what he means by that, and I won't let him expand on it, but if a guy, which a lot of these high net worth individuals don't have to sell their land, but when the market's right, if they ever consider, that's when they would consider. Right. So the best properties are on the market now. Right now, yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're seeing properties that are bringing good money and people are like, those things are going way over over market. Well, they are over market because they're better than the market that is there. Uh, these people have been cultivating these properties, you know, for deer. They've had history of big bucks being shot on it. They've had good management practices on it. And they got topography and just every little aspect of them is perfect. And they know it and they only take it to the market when the market's hot. That's good. Also, talking about when the bubble is going to burst and prices are high right now. And I'm going to let Travis, because he's a little sm- probably a little smarter than me with this. So let's just say you're going to buy a million dollar property. Uh, it's an easy figure to work off of. And the bubble does pop in three years. Well, if interest rates get to six and a half, seven percent, which is pretty normal, that's, mm-hmm. that's not super high or crazy or anything. That million, the property you could have got for a million, and your your note's going to be the same even if the pro, if the market drops fifteen percent, which I think is probably a little excessive, let's say fifteen or twenty percent. But you're paying fifteen or twenty percent more for your note every month because your interest is higher. What are we even talking about? Right. It, I mean, it, it's the best time to buy. When Yesterday. The interest, exactly. You you can't wait for the turn. You know, things to turn because when things turn, everything changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and 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 you know, if things turns, whatever business you're in, you know, it, it could change too. I don't know. It's just it's a comfort being in land. My family's in land. I preach land all day, every day. You know, I know people make a lot of money in the stock market and do this with Bitcoin and all this. But you know, I have a good friends that do a lot with Bitcoin. I have not seen a single one of them catch a fish or kill a deer with their Bitcoin. Mm-mm. I ain't seen it yet. You know. I mean, I mean, you look at, uh, you know, one of our taglines, stand on your investment. Mm-hmm. You, you can't stand on a piece of paper. That's right. Or a computer screen. Or a computer screen. But you can stand on that land and take your family out there, share memories. Those are things that you cannot put a price tag on. It's like that American Express commercial, priceless. Mm-hmm. Um, something that, um, heck, I'm losing my train of thought. Uh, something I've been telling my clients, and I, 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 this is I kind of formulated this myself, Tomorrow, Elon Musk could tweet this, tweet A. Trump could tweet this, Biden could tweet this, and stocks would go up, stocks would go down, Bitcoin, Tesla, Apple, you name it. That's going to affect it. Literally, they can tweet it right now, and by the end of the day, we'll see effect of it. Guess what's not going to be affected? Biden could tweet this, and guess what's going to happen to mine your land? Absolutely nothing. Hmm. Musk. Bezos, don't matter what they tweet, what they say, what the news says, the land's going to historically keep going up, and it's not going it, to. It scares me to death that I could have a significant part of my life savings somewhere. Somebody could literally get on their phone and tweet something, and affect the price up. That's scary. And I, I mean, I don't know what you had for investments in the last, you know, crash and uh, 08. and I mean, there was a lot of people that lost all their four hundred one ks, and I mean. I lost a ton of money in it, but I still had my farm. That's worth a lot more today than it was even pre-crash. Well, I'll tell you, in 08, I was two years out of college. 
I didn't have any investment. <laughs> <laughs> I had a truck and a house note. That's about it. And, uh, you know, if, if I look at that and being through that time, it helps me prepare my clients for this time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and a lot of people in the United Country have been through that. Oh, that was right when Dan and Mike and right, those guys right. bought they it. Came into I mean, a crazy they came time. in right in when it was good, then right into bad. And we've grown. Our office has grown every year since then. I know your guys' mm-hmm. has. And uh, it's because we just kept the foot on the gas and used the tools. It's crazy. So, so where we are, and I won't talk too many numbers, but like, so. We're Travis and I's office, which are pretty much neck and neck, and another friend of ours who used to be with the United Country. We all were neck and neck. We were somewhere where we're on. We're not going to quite get there this year, but what we're projected to almost get to this year is double what three, two years ago. Double. So, I mean, and it's crazy. And it's, you know, and it, the whole market's doing better for one thing. The whole market's doing better, but our agents are doing better than better. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and every property category is doing good. It's crazy to see the. It's actually when you see the numbers, you're you're like, it's almost inconceivable how fast it's growing. And if there was more inventory, just imagine what the numbers would be. Right. I mean, we are in an inventory kind of crisis, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I, I looked at the numbers the other day through the end of August. We have sold less. We had less transactions this year than the year prior. Wow. And I would, I haven't looked at them to compare. I'm going to assume your listings are probably 30, 40% down too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, all that's down, but we're selling those properties that are rarely on the market. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in our neck of the woods versus your neck of the woods, the price per acre, it, it's, it's a big spread. Right, I, mean, right. I mean, we're selling farms for, you know, ten to $12,000 an acre. And uh, so we can afford to. Yeah, yeah. If, if I sell 100 acres, you sell 100 acres. It's a little, little different <laughs> price point. Well, um, it's just, it's cool to talk to Travis because they're passionate about what they do, like like I am and Scott is, and everybody with our company. They have a really good company, a lot of similarities. We're actually talking about numbers and things like that, how actually similar they are. But the main thing I want to take home from this podcast, we're not going to go on too long, is you know why United Country, and you've heard it from Travis and and the people, the culture, the good people, uh, something that our company preaches is first thing when you go out and hire is start with good people, then look for a hard worker. But the first thing, you start with good people. And, you know, is there some bad apples at United Country? Absolutely. There's bad apples everywhere. Uh, we try to weed them out, but uh, it's a great company to work for. No one can put more eyes in front of your property than the United Country who's using his tools. No one can. And, that, and that's a cool place to be in your business. Uh, and just what I tell people, look, usually United Country charges a little more than and other people in the, in the market, and for good reason. You know, most of the time, seller, when you show up in your Platinum Ford or your Cadillac, guess what? You see value. We're Cadillac dealership. If you want a Kia dealership, go somewhere else. That's, that's very true, Slade. It's, uh, you know, it's, we have the tools to expose the properties and to help the, the buyers get the right properties that they've been looking for. So when I, you don't always look at price when you go to the store. Value. You look at what you're going to get for value. I mean, I can, I mean, as a salesman, my whole life, when somebody sells me, I, I'm in, Mm -hmm. you know, because I know I'm going to get service from them. I know I'm going to get everything. And to me with the the short time that we all have, because we're working on and in our business constantly, we don't have time for that. So we look for those people that are like us in other industries, and we pay, we buy the value. Providing value. It's a, it really is a cool place to be, you know, and it's a fun place to be in your company when you know that you're your client's best options. And if you're going to buy and sell rural real estate like we sell, where it's a country home, a farm property, a timber property, a hunting property, whatever it is, that's what United Country Agents are. Now, look, there's great agents that work for all companies, but if your agent shows up and doesn't have a side-by-side to show you the property or doesn't know how to make a map or something like that, maybe you should ask your friend who's that agent to refer us to one of us because we can take care of that sort of thing. You know, you don't... uh, you don't buy your uh, you don't buy your Z seventy one from a donut salesman. You know, you get somebody who knows what they're doing in that industry. Well, I think that's about it. One thing we always do on these podcasts, Travis, and I'm glad I didn't forget. All right, and, and I know you've listened to a couple of them. 
if you had $100 million, so we go buy lottery tickets downstairs, and you get $100 million clean, where are we buying land and why? Well, first of all, I'm going to have to buy a place in St. John's for my wife so I can go out there and buy all that land. So Touche. That, that, I'm going to take care of that in first. In St. John's? Yep. Yeah, uh, okay. Because got to take care of mama. Mm -hmm. um, Lori, you didn't hear that. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm going to buy a track of land in Iowa, and then I'm going to go out to Montana and buy a ranch out there that I can hunt elk, mule deer, and whitetail on. Nice. Montana. Montana. See, I hadn't been out there a very lot. Me and Blanton were talking about how good it is out there. <laughs> I'm going to start getting some preference points and doing some things out mm -hmm. there. I just I, – Montana – Yellowstone, you know, it get it gets gets you thinking. It's so pretty out there. It's just they call it the Big Sky, Big Sky for a reason. I mean, it's uh, I've I've been to all the other ones. I mean, New Mexico and all that other stuff, but Iowa and Montana would be the two places that I would invest that money right off the gate. Iowa always comes up in the deer hunters conversations. Montana has come up. I think I think Blanton actually said. Uh, on the podcast, I think he said Montana. I like you. If I got a hundred million, I'm gonna have a badger bone elk spot. Um, I'm, I'm I'm gonna have Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, kind of over in the corner, Wisconsin. Get over in there. I like I like that area too. And of course, I'm sure you would too. Have a, a additional land by your house. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's a couple farms that I would walk right over there and hand them a check. Hand them a check and. You know, Kansas is another place I've spent a lot of time in over the years and had I've owned property down there and uh, I would get down there for sure, but I will be in so close to Wisconsin I can hop right over there and, you know, do my thing. That's right, that's right. Well, Travis, thank you for being on here. We gotta get back to convention so we can learn some more stuff. They got some really good classes this afternoon. I'm excited to go to and, and learn some more stuff. We got some awards and Travis gets to get all the awards and I get to get – It's it, let me tell you the worst part of this convention. I had to go through the agony of defeat, be, get letting Curtis – I'm number two agent in 2020. And – or is it, is, yep. this is – yeah, in 2020. Yep. And so I had to go through the agony of, of hearing him pick on me. for. And now I'm doing it. It's like I, I just get shot in the arm again. <laughs> it's I get to do it all over again. But it's fun. It's a fun competition. Me and, me and him were talking last night, and we were joking back and forth. But I told him he better be ready because – me and new Ryan are working on it for 2021. Well, Travis, thank you for coming on. We're going to get back to it. And uh, until next time, here we go. Hey, thank you for listening to the Hunt and Land Man podcast. If you will, take a moment, give us a five-star written view, guys. This really helps us out. And if you know anybody you think will be interested in this podcast, please share it with them.